Hello, welcome to Xinhua Live, and this is Darren. Now, today we are at uh, CRRC, Qingdao Sifang Corporation Limited. This is where the 600 km per hour high-speed maglev train rolled off the production line on July 20th last year. It is currently the fastest ground vehicle available in the whole world. You may hear the name of CRRC Qingdao Sifang before. It is the core subsidiary of Ho CRC Corporation. Uh, you know, 50% of all the high-speed trains run in China, and uh, more than 70% of all the top-grade passenger coaches are produced by CRC. It also has many famous products, such as CRH388, which is known as Hexie Hao, and the CR400EF, which is known as Fuxing Hao. The development of the high-speed train, the high-speed maglev project, is uh, organized by CRC and uh, is led by CRC Qingdao Sifang. It has brought together the experts from more than 30 universities, research institutes, and enterprises from home and abroad in the field of uh, high-speed maglev and the high-speed railway to jointly develop the new high-speed maglev system. So today, we are very happy to have uh, Dr. Ding, the chief engineer of the whole high-speed maglev system to with us. Now let's have a short interview. Hello, Dr. Ding. Hello, nice, very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, uh, Dr. Ding, we have uh, several questions for you. So the first one is that, uh, can you give uh, us an overall introduction of the whole project? Uh, from the year 2002, the Shanghai Maglev 9 plant in operation, and which is the first uh, commercial operation in, in, in the world. Yeah. And uh, from that time up to now, mm -hmm. the only 20 years have passed. Yeah. Our Chinese people have been carried out the uh, R&D for the maglev train for nearly 20 years. Wow, and so up to now, yeah. uh, all the engineers prototype has been finished. Mm -hmm. You can see this with the uh, train with five, five cars and uh, we have all the other systems including the propulsion system is over mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and the control system over there. Mm -hmm. And also the track and turnover and all of the things. So, I think it's a great breakthrough in this area. Sure. It's uh, meaning that we have been changed from the theatrical effort to the engineer effort. Mm -hmm. So the next question is, can you introduce uh, what is the current progress of the train? And uh, just you can see that uh, the pro uh, engineer prototype is finished and uh, mm -hmm. before that, and we have already finished a testing car. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the testing car running with no speed, and we improved the design, and finally, we mm -hmm. finished the prototype, it, uh, uh, including the whole system, and we carried the low speed test and commission. Mm -hmm. Now, we are very anxious to waiting for the nine to yeah. run for the 600. Yeah. So thank you very much, Dr. Dean. So as we know that uh, for the high-speed uh, operation, the, co the operation control is very important for safe operation because in such a very high speed, if uh, there's anything wrong with the operation, it may cause some problem. So now let's have a visit inside of uh, the traction operation control center. So Dr. Ding, can you give uh, us a brief introduction of uh, what we have inside of the traction control center? For the maglev trains, you know, we, we look, it's not just mean the train, mm -hmm. it's uh, the whole system, the train and the propulsion system, the control system and the signal system. Mm -hmm. Now, the train is over there, but yeah. the others are over there. Ah. The propulsion, the, the braking, the whole controlling mm -hmm. and uh, the signaling and uh, well, many of the others in this building, you can just visit. Yeah, so we see that uh, the high-speed maglev system is more than just one train. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Wow, so this is our uh, traction and operation control center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you can see the yeah. Wow. Um, just from this screen, I can see that we have uh, many cutting-edge technologies. 
So, uh, Dr. Ding, can you introduce about uh, besides the control and operation technology, what are other challenges that we conquered in the process? Uh, as you know, the maglev system is a very huge and uh, complicated system. Mm -hmm. I think the challenges uh, generally is uh, in three areas. Mm -hmm. The first is the issues from the high speed, and mm -hmm. second is the adoption to the circumstance, the weather. Mm -hmm. And uh, the finally, I think, is the localization. Mm -hmm. For the technical thing, the first thing we need to resolve is the aerodynamic design. Mm -hmm. You know, with the speed up to 600, the aero resistance and the noise will yeah. account most of the train. Mm -hmm. As well as others, like the air compressor, mm -hmm. the microwave, the lift, the crosswind effect, all of this means we need the advanced aerodynamic design. Yeah. That means that the a little hurt and a very careful treatment for yeah. the surface. Mm -hmm. And I think the second issue is the clearance. Mm -hmm. It's suspension, you know. So you must keep the clearance between the car and the track mm -hmm. be exactly the about the 10 millimeters. Mm -hmm. So with the running speed, with the turbulence of, from the other outside, it's, it's very difficult, but it's crucial for the maglev trees. Yeah. So we need a very advanced levitation guidance system, and also we need a proven suspension device, and mm -hmm. uh, we need to design the new track to according with it, not just uh, to keep the clearance, mm -hmm. but keep the stability of the train and the comfortable of, the, of our passengers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the third important issue we must mention is that Sangless control. Mm -hmm. You know, the device, the train, is just the one part of it. Mm -hmm. The other device, the traction, the control, and the signaling, and the, the turnover, all of them is divided. Some of them on the train, some of them on the ground, and some of them on the track. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to not only just the uh, very precise synchronous control of the traction, but yeah. also we need harmonic action between among these devices. Mm -hmm. Besides this, and many other issues like the heavy power traction brake mm -hmm. and the uh, advanced signaling system and mm -hmm. EMC and uh, energy consumption, all of this, that means a uh, very arduous journey for our exploration. Mm -hmm. Well, there's uh, so many cutting edge technologies that even it's just uh, beyond what we already have for the traditional high speed train. So we see that uh, we have so uh, we have the train running very well and the tests are running very well. So what do you think? What what is your expectation of the application of the maglev train in the future? Uh, I just mentioned that the the hot maglev trains, the application scenario is very abundant. Mm -hmm. Not only suitable for long distance, but also suitable mm -hmm. for the intercity mm -hmm. commute. Mm. Um, for my opinion, I'm very anxious to wait for the mm -hmm. 600 running, but, the, yeah. Yeah. but I think uh, the things need to do it step by step. Mm -hmm. The first thing I think we need uh, test nine, and we can try it with the maximum speed to 600 or more. Mm -hmm. And then we arrange some tests that with uh, some passengers on it on board. Mm -hmm. And then finally the commercial running. Yeah. So uh, as uh, Dr. Dean said, we had to do it step by step. I know everyone is uh, very, very, uh, has very great expectations to see the trial operation with 600 kilometers per hour. But uh, please, let's have more patience. So uh, the next question is, um, since we have made so many breakthroughs in the technology and in the maglev train, so what is the significance for China and for the world? Uh, before these questions, I'd like to mm -hmm. say something about the advantage of the uh -huh. maglev trains. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, very, very fast, it's 600. Yeah. I think this is the fastest uh, traveling tool that's available for our people up to now. Mm -hmm. uh, take example from Beijing to Shanghai. Mm -hmm. it's, it will just take three and a half an hour for the maglev, mm -hmm. but uh, for the airplane, it will be four and a half an hour. Oh. If we think about the auxiliary and waiting yeah, time, yeah. and uh, that's one aspect. The other aspect is uh, mm. 
acceleration capability. Mm -hmm. uh, for the maglev, its uh, speed up from zero to 600 km per hour, it just take 3.5 mi minutes. Wow, that's fast. That's uh, quick than the uh, high speed railways. Mm -hmm. For it, it's from three to, from zero to 350, mm -hmm. it will take nearly six mi minutes. Mm -hmm. So, as I mentioned, it's not only suitable for the long distance, but also for the uh, interstate commute. Yeah. And the second thing is large capacity. It's even higher than the high speed railways mm -hmm. because it's with the uh, board car body. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the second, I think, the adventure is uh, it's, uh, punctual. Mm -hmm. Low, it's withstand, it withstand the wind, sand, ice, and snow. Mm -hmm. That is always can run on schedule yeah. compared with the airplane and oh. even compared with the high-speed railways. Sure. And uh, also it's very, very safe mm. because, you know, uh, just because of its de special design of the structure and uh, the section of the power supply mm -hmm. mechanism, uh, the car body will enclose the track that hold it. Mm. And also in, at any time, just one tree in the section of the power supply. Uh -huh. So that means the risk of derail and uh, colliding mm -hmm. is very, very low mm -hmm. compared with the traditional uh, high-speed railways. Mm -hmm. And uh, with this and many other advanced technologies such as PM, PHM, et cetera, it makes it very safe and uh, mm -hmm. uh, available. Yeah. And also, I must mention this, it's uh, because it's suspension with no contact between the wheel and the rear with low rotating parts. Mm. So it's nearly maintenance free. The maintenance is very, oh. very low and uh, yeah. nearly with, without overhaul. Mm -hmm. And also it's uh, suitable for the very big snow and very small readers. Mm -hmm. That means for the many requirement is very limited. So with this, all of them make it very hopeful technology for the future. Yeah. So, uh, I can say that uh, I can mention some, some, some words that mm -hmm. the history of human being is history of speed. Yeah. With the running speed up to 600, I can, I, I can think that it will bring us with many, many benefits, the communication, yeah. the efficiency, yeah, the and many, many changes, mm -hmm. not only for people, domestic, yeah. And I think it will also for people all around the world. Mm -hmm. In this regard, I think it will enhance the improvement of uh, the whole society. Mm -hmm. So we can see that uh, the high speed uh, 600 kilometer per hour high speed mega train is really the technology for the future. But uh, we are very possible to see the technology put into commercial operation in the very soon future. So thank you very much, Dr. Ding. Thank you. So now let's move on to the next site. So that is all for our traction control center. Now we know that uh, the, high, the traction control is very important for high speed operation to improve the safety. So now we also see that uh, the high speed train has stopped by the platform. Now uh, let's take a closer look. So we can see from the head shape that uh, it has a very long nose. I guess for one reason to improve the air resistance to have higher speed and for another reason to make it more beautiful. But uh, as an amateur, that's all I can see from the headship. But we are very lucky today. We have a professional with us, Dr. Lee there, to give us more detailed introduction. Let's go. Hello, nice to meet you, Dr. Lee. Nice to meet you. So, can you give us a more detailed introduction of the head shape design? Yes, we select the streamlined head shape from more than 30 proposals. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful and yeah. much cooler, yeah. and besides, and uh, it can also uh, reduce the air resist yeah. resistance, so mm -hmm. it has a uh, sm uh, smaller 
uh, um, uh, energy consumption. Yeah. And it, it can also uh, suppress the air dynamic, the uh, lift force. Uh -huh. So it can keep the levitation more stable. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there's no uh, contact with the pantograph mm -hmm. or the uh, current uh, uh, reel at yeah. high speed. Yeah. Uh, we also consider some uh, noise and uh -huh. vibration uh -huh. reduction mechanism. Uh -huh. So at high speed, the passenger can enjoy more, uh, uh, much better ride comfort. Yes. Yeah. Less noise, more safety, and yeah. more comfort. That's uh, what the passengers are looking for. Yeah. Yeah. So can we get inside to see the interior? Okay. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. So we can see that uh, the shape of the cupboard is very different. It's like a tube. Yeah, and uh, it can run at, at a larger speed. Oh, yeah. yes, yeah. Okay, so this is uh, the entrance. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, as soon as you enter the vehicle, mm -hmm. yeah, you can see that there's uh, a make, uh, the camera. Oh. It has the face rec recognized Function. Uh -huh. If you enter the wrong car, you will be promoted. Ah, that's a very good function for yeah. the passengers. Yes. So this is the luggage rack. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is for the large luggage. Uh -huh. Yeah. It also supports the face recognition, oh. and it can lock your luggage, mm. so you can feel safe. Yeah. Ah, so that no one will take my luggage away by mistake. Yes. Yes. It's yeah. uh, some function that I'll hope. It will also have for the high-speed train. Yeah. So we know that uh, for the traditional high-speed train, we have a business class, first class, and second class. Is it the same for this one? Yes, it's the same. Okay. Now, now we are in the first class. Oh, this is the first class. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. You can try. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I must say the texture is uh, very different from the traditional one. Yeah. You can feel it by just one touch. It's very good. We have optimized the softness of the seat wow. and the back rest, and it's wider yeah. than the high-speed train. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have we, we also add the uh, wireless charging oh. device for the phone, mm -hmm. and uh, also we have the see as the screen mm -hmm. for for the, the passengers. You can enjoy the internet. Yeah. yeah. So, and also considering the very big uh, leg room, yeah, I yeah. think it will surely provide much better comfort than the airplane. Yes, yes. So besides uh, what you just introduced, can you give us some other characteristics compared with uh, the traditional high-speed train? You can see that we have the beautiful roof, yeah, uh, yes. the, the luggage uh, component uh, uh -huh. with the starry uh, sky design, yeah. yeah. And nice. uh, all these lights uh, can be uh, changed automatically oh. according to different scenarios, mm -hmm. uh, like different uh, seasons, mm -hmm. yeah, and, uh, or different time, uh, in the morning, in the noon, or night. Mm -hmm. And uh, it can give the passengers a more comfortable experience. Yes, to give you different experience for different time of the year and time of the day is very romantic design. So I guess that is our driver's cab. Can we take a, a look inside? Okay, let's go. Okay. Wow. You know, when I see the pattern and when I see the light, I must say it's what we, what we expect in the friction movie. Very beautiful. Yeah, it's like in the future. Yes. <laughs> so this one, I guess, is the business class. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. okay. Oh, thank you. Wow, this this sofa is very very good one. Yeah, it does feel at home. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And also, this is the window. The uh -huh. window the, 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 is transparent, mm -hmm. but it uh, 
the, the lightness can be changed automatically. Oh. Uh, when the vehicle go into the tunnel or mm -hmm. after tunnel, it it will protect uh, the eyes for the uh -huh. for the passengers. So we can control it. You, you can control it automatically or manually. Both. Yeah. Yes. Both. Oh. Uh, you also manually or. Oh, very or, nice. Or manually. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. It has also the pad for uh -huh. the passengers, and there's also the wireless uh -huh. charging, and it's kind of more convenient. Yes, very good function. Yeah. So that is our uh, driver's seat. Yeah. Can can I take uh, a yeah. ticket? Thank you. Yeah. Wow, when I see this capsule, it's uh, very fancy. Yeah, it's very like beautiful. In the Guy, the seat. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, can you can you give us some introduction about the functions here? Yeah. This is a display. Mm -hmm. You can see there are three parts. Mm -hmm. The first part is the uh, control status uh -huh. of the vehicle, mm -hmm. whether lifted or settled down. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is for the diagnosis mm -hmm. information of mm -hmm. the vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the third one is the piece information. Mm -hmm. uh, the, there's video information inside of the car or outside of the car. Ah, so that the driver can know the fun the current st status of uh, each system. Yeah. Mm, very good. Yeah. So uh, it's, uh, the piece system is very clear. And uh, there's also, uh, if you want to broadcast mm -hmm. the driver, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, here is oh. the switches. Oh, it's right here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can also adjust uh, the position of the seat. Oh, let me try. Mm -hmm. Wow, I, uh, I like this sound, yeah. this stamping sense. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, to ensure the safety, there's mm. a foot that the bringer. Oh. Yeah. So the driver, uh, yeah. so the car will know that the tr it, it is the driver sitting here. Yeah, yeah. It's not uh, someone not authorized. Authorized. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Driver. Yes, yeah. very good uh, safety function for yeah. the safe operation. Yeah. Normally, this vehicle is autom automatic uh, oh. drive. Mm -hmm. The the driver does not do do not need to do anything. Uh -huh. Only as maybe as some fault condition, mm -hmm. or maybe in the maintenance, mm -hmm. it needs the vehicle to do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we know the function of the driver's caps and the driver's seat. And we can read from uh, many parameters here. Yeah, the, the uh, velocity and mm -hmm. uh, for uh, the voltage of the vehicle. Yeah. Mm. It's, uh, wow, it's uh, exactly what we see in the friction movie. So yeah. nice. Yeah. Mm. So now we see the train is uh, driving back to our commissioning workshop. Yeah. Um, How do you feel? Yeah, we can feel this speed. It's very stable. And it's very hard to imagine how the train elevated above the rail and just uh, go forward. It's a very different experience. Yes, there's only 10 ah, millimeters wow. between the vehicle and the guard wheel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we see uh, the train has uh, entered the commissioning workshop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We must say thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you for your so professional introduction. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. See you. Yeah. see you. So now we have uh, see the exterior design and the interior design. We see so many different functions and so many uh, information about head shape design. Now let's see what we will do in the commissioning workshop. So I guess this is the second class, different from the first class, it's a 3-3 three, three seat layout. Less space, but I think it's still very worth the ticket. So this one is used for testing and commissioning, I guess. Okay, so now let's get off the train. We, oh wow, this is the commission workshop. It's very spacious. I think that's what we do for a very big train commissioning.
So for the commissioning part, we are also very lucky today. We have a commission engineer, Ms. Zhang, with us to give us more introduction about uh, the test and commissioning. So, Ms. Zhang, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, um, can you give an introduction about uh, what kind of tests and commissioning we do for the high speed for the high speed maglev? Okay, uh, because uh, our commissioning work mm -hmm. involves the whole system of high speed maglev. Yeah. So. Uh, we need to do the commission work from the single system mm -hmm. to the multi systems. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, about the vehicle system, uh, if we want the vehicle to levitation, mm -hmm. uh, we need to uh, first commission many uh, sub systems, yeah. uh, such as the onboard power supply system, mm -hmm. the control and the diagnosis system, yeah. and uh, the Air pipe system, mm. and then after the, all this work, uh, we will to do the commissioning of the levitation and the guidance mm -hmm. uh, system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, after the single system, we have finished this work. Mm -hmm. uh, we will uh, make the vehicle to do to running, mm. and first uh, we make manually uh, driving the vehicles, mm. and then uh, we will automatically to driving the. Uh, vehicles. Yeah. So, uh, uh, the uh, the whole commissioning work from the single system to mm -hmm. mouse system, mm -hmm. and uh, from manually control the system of the vehicle, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, for to the control uh, the vehicle of the uh, automatic driving. Yeah. So we see for just one system commissioning, it has been so complex. We must need a very good uh, arranged uh, plan to do the whole commissioning and uh, test. So, Mr. Jiang, what kind of test we are doing right now for the high-speed maglev? Okay, uh, last year we have finished the whole system commissioning work uh, because mm -hmm. the operation system and the uh, propulsion system mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, wireless communication systems, mm -hmm. we have uh, double suppliers. Mm -hmm. So now we are doing the crossing uh, mm. commissioning work, mm. and also we are optimizing the vehicle parameters mm. to improve the vehicle comfort. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so at last, I hope that uh, mm -hmm. by our uh, efforts, uh, we uh, we will uh, take a more comfortable, mm -hmm. more faster yeah. uh, transportation system yeah. uh, to people. Okay. So we can see that um, by commissioning, we can also ensure a much better and more comfortable experience mm -hmm. for our passengers. Mm -hmm. So for the third question, I believe co compared with the traditional high-speed train, the commissioning of uh, the high-speed magnet must be very different. So can you give us uh, some introduction about what, cut, what kind of cutting-edge technologies we are used for the high-speed magnet? Yeah, uh, we use the many black technologies. Mm -hmm. Uh, due to the time reason, I only introduced oh. the PTM and the digital twin technology. Mm -hmm. uh, for the PTM, uh, we arrange many sensors in the vehicle, mm -hmm. uh, such as the temperature sensors mm -hmm. and the uh, stress sensors. Mm -hmm. uh, we use them uh, to monitor the temperature of the magnet mm -hmm. and the uh, mechanical the status of the mechanical mm -hmm. uh, uh, components. Mm -hmm. And uh, use this, we can uh, improve our uh, designs. Mm -hmm. and, and about the digital twin mm -hmm. technology, it has many advantages. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, digitizes the physical uh, system. And uh, use the digital twin system mm -hmm. when the vehicle running wow. and uh, the uh, digital twin also running, mm -hmm. we can they can uh, verify kind of verify yeah, each other. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, they are very, very, very fast, uh, faster mm -hmm. data to, to running. Yeah. So we can see that uh, the test and commissioning and design, they are both very important. But uh, with the uh, test and commissioning, we can verify the design and also improve the design. Yeah. So now we see how important is the test and commissioning for such a big thing. Thank you, Ms. Jiang. Thank you for your very professional introduction. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
So after we had this tour around uh, the production base and after the professional talking with our engineers, we are wrapping our uh, Xinhua Live today. We hope you all enjoy a very good time and uh, please let us know what you think of the high-speed uh, Maglu train. So thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.